public that don't normally visit us. All our meetings are recorded. If you speak, it will be up on YouTube. Um, in all your glory. <laughs> are we recording? Yes. So, welcome to the August Full Town Council meeting for Bingley Town Council. First item on the agenda, 22, 23, 24, 81, chairs, remarks. Um, so, for me, we're obviously getting to the end of the summer, summer holiday period. Um, the last of our six play in the park events is this Friday in Mental Park. And our last bandstand concert for the year is on Sunday at 2 o'clock in Myrtle Park. Um, I think the summer's been a bit a bit odd. The weather's been relatively kind to us for some of the events. Um, and obviously we'll, we'll be here and see what we want to carry on with next year. Upcoming events that I know and I'm aware of, uh, there's a relaunch of the Chamber of Trade on Monday the 4th of September. I think we've got that under correspondence. Walkers are, walkers are welcome, are celebrating as part of uh, National Heritage Week. They're celebrating 75 years of the Little Theatre with a walk on the 10th of September uh, that starts at 10 o'clock. And on Saturday the 16th, we as the Town Council are holding a networking event uh, for local groups to see how together we can make Bingley better and that's at Cardigan House starting at 10 o'clock and all, all groups and all people are welcome to attend. Um, from looking at things like Facebook and other social media, there is a lot of comments about antisocial behaviour in and around <coughs> Myrtle Park particularly. Um, the plea we've got from the police is that if you do see it, Whilst, it, whilst it's fine to put it on social media, it would help greatly if it's actually reported to them so they can build up a, a good picture of what's happening and then take appropriate action. And they recommend the live chat service to actually get that through to them. Um, obviously we've got uh, Binley Business Expo coming up towards the end of September. So we still need some council volunteers to, to man the stall. Uh, council group said he could do the afternoon, so if there's anyone who could do the morning, please discuss afterwards. And then last but not least, as we learned today, congratulations to our own deputy clerk for passing the silver exams. So Moving on then, 23-24-82, apologies for absence as the book may be its full way round. Yeah. Yep, so we've got councillors Drucker and Mia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I have a proposal? Yeah, proposal. Second that? Yeah. So we've got councillor Good and councillor Williams. Taking together, all in favour? Thank you. 23, 24, 83, disclosures of interest to receive declarations of interest from councils for items on the agenda. Anybody want to declare? It's not? Okay. Written request for dispensations? Not this. Okay. 23, 24, 84, the minutes of the previous meeting. Does any anybody have any amendments or corrections to the minutes of the previous meeting? Yeah, it's all proposed chair. <coughs> okay, proposed by Councillor Clough. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Williams. John, have you had the chance to look at Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. okay. All in favour, accept the minutes. Thank you. 23, 24, 85, confidential item to be discussed in confidence after item 104. To consider if there are any further items on the agenda that need to be discussed in confidence due to the sensitive nature. Does anybody have anything that they wish to move? Can I ask a point of order as to why number 104 is in private session? <coughs> I mean, I don't know what it's about, uh, I haven't a clue, but 
I think from Joe Public's point of view, it'd be good if it was in public session. It's it's about the conflict of a member prior to a meeting. Okay. Okay. In that case, if it's personal, we'll leave it there. Okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. Um, so obviously, 20B, 24, 86, City and Culture update. We will defer at this point, um, which is a little bit of a shame because I was hoping it would dovetail nicely <laughs> into. Shall I have a quick look at Yeah, if you were to. Okay. Just in case they're struggling to find this as well. Just a bit, the entrance to this venue is a, a little. Confusing, Whoa. isn't it? Yeah. Nice one. No sign. No sign. Okay. So we will move on to 23, 24, 87. Public participation. <coughs> uh, members of public are reminded this is their opportunity to speak to the meeting on any topic relevant to the work of the council. Uh, they will not speak to the rest of the meeting unless specifically invited to do so by the chair. Um, Helen, have you? Uh, yes, if I may, through the chair, um, I'd just like to um, recognise we have a new member for Gilstead, of which I'm a resident, um, and I'd like to ask Councillor Shaw uh, what his priorities will be for Gilstead in particular, and the town council and the town in general. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been on council for before I know quite a lot of the issues with the with the town centre and uh, we need to push especially and I, and I live in Gilstead myself anyway so we need to look at what we're going to do we've got, we've got speeding cars we've got issues with traffic we've got parking issues we've got and um, just general things around there at the moment but the town centre we've got issues to do with the uh, pushing everything else but what we can't do as much as the main councillors can. May I again ask through the, through the chair, um, given your very vocal opposition to the formation of a town council initially, what's changed your mind? I'm trying to do, do something in the community. Uh, can we expect to see you supporting Gilstead Village Society? Can do, yes. If I get an invitation, I'll turn up. That's not a problem. No, I'm just here for the enjoyment of being present. <laughs> <laughs> and then Susan, from you, I, I, I didn't come to speak about anything in particular, but if you'd like me to speak about I would. the meetings I've organised. Yep. Do you want me to do that now? Yeah. Yeah. It, would, it would be better actually, as we've done a, a Okay, so <laughs> um, the district councillors had a briefing from the City of Culture team a month or so ago in City Hall about the work they're doing. And it occurred to me that what we need to be doing in Bingley is saying, this is what we want from City of Culture, not wait to be told this is what, you know, you can have or whatever. So um, I think some of you know I pulled together help with help from a lot of people. The, the, the application with Myrtle Park Friends for the bandstand renovation. Um, it was something that they were very keen to, to progress with, but I was the person who had the time to, to sort of pull it together. Um, so that was a really positive collaboration for that bid. Um, and I thought, you know, this is like, this could be the start of groups in Bingley working together in a positive way to, to really make 2025 a very positive year for Bingley. Um, so I, uh, 
decided to <laughs> invite people if they wanted to come to a meeting and talk about it, which that took place last Thursday. Philippa kindly came along. Hi, Shanaz. And Shanaz kindly came along. And I, I sort of put together my own list of pe people like groups I knew to, to reach out to. Um, and apologies if anyone feels I, I missed any group or particular person. I'm still building up the, the list um, myself. Obviously, as you all know, I'm relatively new to this. I'm learning, I'm learning the groups, the people. So I'm adding to the list of uh, who's on, on the email list all the time. We've got a meeting in two meetings in October. There's going to be an open meeting on the 11th of October, uh, again in the Arts Centre, half past six. That's a sort of open meeting. And then I'm also trying to organise monthly meetings for a sort of core group of people who feel they can give time and energy to this. Um, because if we want, people came out with some brilliant ideas last week, but if we're going to make them happen, there's a lot of work to do. So, um, Philippa, I'll, I'll, keep into, I'll keep all the information flowing with Philippa, um, and I'm really happy for people to, to, if they want to talk to me about what's going on, you know, just ask. Sure. <laughs> I have an apologies. We uh, we got stuck in traffic coming out of the city centre, <laughs> which is always a joy around about quarter to six. Yeah. Um, it's really nice to see everybody again. I think it was me who came last time as well. Um, for those who don't know, I'm Shanaz, I'm the creative director of 2025. And I'm Rhiannon, I'm the head of engagement with a focus on the creative programme for 2025. Nice to meet you. So is it worth me kind of giving a quick update? You've obviously heard most of this before, so yeah. the, the, the other members of the yeah. that the town council have so please, yeah. please have Yeah, really, please. really happy to do that. So just to kind of give you a uh, an update as to where we are, um we are obviously you'll have heard some of the funding news. So Heritage Lottery Fund, DCMS and the Arts Council. Uh, so we're well on our way to raise the funds um, needed to deliver the city of culture, but we're constantly kind of at the moment raising funds while trying to pull together a program. Um, the National Lottery Heritage Fund success means um, obviously that we are focusing quite heavily within our program from a heritage perspective. Uh, that includes rural, it includes building, it includes people. So it's across everything. It's looking at our history, our heritage, where we are now, and kind of ensuring that we tell our story, the Bradford story, properly and as it should be told. Um, we are also kind of looking at um, how we can create opportunities for community groups. So I talk a lot about the artists, artist-led, our sector, but also we're creating a call-out next year in spring for our community groups. This is not for artists, this is for communities. Um, so they can kind of apply for funding if they've got an idea that they want to do. As I found out last week that Bingley's ancient name is a Thrustle's Nest. If somebody wants to do a piece around that, they, if a community group wants to do a piece around that, they can apply for some funding to that pot. That will be in spring next year. Um, at the end of this year, we are doing another call out. I say end, I'm looking at November, December. Um, where we're going to do a brief, but again, just Bradford artists. Um, the Bradford sector. Nobody from outside the Bradford district will get that opportunity. It's just for Bradford. And that is for artists who are going to respond to a particular brief which we're working up at the moment. Um, probably February, March next year, we are looking to do a festivals call out. So festivals that are happening across the district, there'll be a pot of funding that festivals can say, actually, there's this brilliant idea that I've got. There's a song I want to write. There's a, a performer that we need. There's a play we'd like as part of our festival. There's a parade that we want as part of our festival. Something like that, you can actually, you know, I'm just saying things off the top of my head. I'm sure, I'm sure my um, friends and colleagues and peers across the district will have much better ideas than that. But, because they know their festival, we will then be looking at what we can fund and what we can support through that fund. Um, Rihanna's going to be talking a little bit about um, the work that she's doing, and there's a major piece of work that I'll, I'll let Rihanna talk to and talk about. 
Um, as part of our heritage, when I'm also thinking about rural, one of the first things that I did last year when I was in Perth, end of last year, is I spoke to a lot of the walking groups. So there is a project as part of our heritage piece that is called Bradford on Foot. That's the title at the moment. So that is looking at working cross-generational, um, from children through to our older generations, to kind of can almost kind of map the district from urban to rural because you can walk from a, from a rural uh, urban location across the district into a rural location because I just drove over the tops to get to you guys from uh, from the city and it was you just kind of breathe out every time you come into the rural district it just means that you constantly breathe out so kind of try to think about that from a health and well-being perspective but also kind of bringing back to life some of our, some of our heritage walks some of our walks that are kind of grown over that haven't been as well used, kind of looking at why not, what's happened, what's been the kind of building work that's happened around those routes that they've either become less attractive, less used, or people feel like they're not as safe when they do those routes. So some of that work. Um, we'll be announcing the full programme for the year in September next year. And so we're doing that as a, so that our district, everybody can know what's happening, but also because we'll be working with community groups, we'll be working with artists, we'll be working with, you know, schools, those group, every, those people who are involved will know what's happening within the projects that they're involved in, but actually September we'll be launching the programme. So everybody will know what's happening as part of our year in 2025. Um, as we kind of start, what I found last week and what I found as I'm speaking to people across the district and as, I'm, as, as our team are going across the district is everything's kind of synchronising. So, you know, when you're of a place, you know it and you kind of get a sense of what some of the, what some of the kind of, you know, wants might be or needs might be. And then when you meet people and they go, actually, we're thinking about this as well. And we were thinking, this could be an interesting way of doing it. So then that adds to our thinking. So they were constantly kind of gathering and saying, how can we add value? How can we give opportunity? And how can we ensure that people feel included so that they're part of it? Um, so we're constantly doing that. And we were actually on the way here <coughs> looking at when's the next town council meeting that we can then attend. So do it as like a regular update. So make sure that we come to our town councils as well as our city councillors so that everyone feels like they're involved and included. I'm going to hand over to Sienna now. Oh, thank you. I don't think I've met many of you before, so really nice to meet you. Um, the programme that I'm developing is about making sure that we have more creative communities, but that also where those communities are already creative, where there's that latent creativity that's already happening in communities, we're shining the spotlight on that work and that activity, and also making sure that we engage with formal education so that we have a free of charge, offer an opportunity available to all 209 schools, primary and secondary, across Bradford District. Developing those ideas, she has mentioned our Heritage Fund at the moment, <coughs> one of those programmes that we're developing is called the Bradford Curriculum. Um, we've, uh, we're going to be looking at how we can ensure that young people in schools are aware of the rich, um, vibrant history of the whole of the Bradford District. So how can we make sure that young people are also responsible for understanding and telling those stories of their local community? So rather than just sharing formal information, young people uh, help us tell our own stories back to the rest of the community as well. Um, we have a large piece of work that we're developing with communities, um, which will allow us to work with artists in all of the 30 regions <coughs> across Bradford. So that piece of work at the moment, um, we're just in the process of um, a, a funding application for that work. Um, we have plans that will mean that we're starting to work in each ward from 2024, so that by 2025 there'll be an artist that is working regularly in each of those 30 wards. That work will allow us to work with communities to find out what they are already doing that's cultural uh, and, and creative and to expand and bring a spotlight to that work, but also to bring new creative practices to those local communities, areas that they're particularly interested in. We describe that as a socially engaged piece of practice, which might mean that we're working with artists to understand what local communities might like to improve and change, and then using um, 
creativity and culture to help make some of those changes. But it also might be for those communities that they just want to have a great fun time. And we're also really up for communities that are kind of wanting to actually just have a bit of a party as well and find their own unique way to celebrate being a city of culture. Um, a couple of other things that I'd just like to mention alongside those two programmes. We're already going to be working in secondary schools developing a project called Digital Creatives. The aim of that project is that we basically feel that at the moment a lot of young people are always using devices and they're absolutely brilliant at using devices but in a bit of a passive way. So this is about helping young people learn some of those creative and digital skills so that they can become makers of digital technology and make their own digital creative artworks that we can then showcase as part of 25. Um, a couple of other ones to mention which is we've got a freelancer sign up um, on our happen and be a huge success we're going to need a huge raft of, of freelancers that could be anything from um, British Sign Language interpreters to chaperones working with children and young people that might be some people who've got loads of time on their hands who want to offer a real specialist skill um, for paid work it might be people who could do a few days here and there and have a particular um, skill. We ask people to sign up via our website there's a form on there that will be held on the website for at least another six months people can sign up to it there um, and uh, the other thing just to mention is that some of this work is already happening we're developing a program for writers that's just started in the last couple of weeks um, working with a national organization called Pain to Plow who are brilliant at new writing uh, and a local organization called Freedom Studios and that's free training um, opportunity <coughs> for writers in the district as well so I'll leave it there and I'll hand back to Chanel. So we wanted to kind of just come and give an update of where we are. Um, a lot of the opportunities that we've talked about are going to actually, call outs are going to start going out into public domain because some of this has been as a result of the funding that we've raised. That funding that we've raised is against some of these programme ideas. And so some of this work is actually going to be done in development. Development being, our year is 2025, January to December, it will be January to December, um, but there's development work that has to happen to kind of get us to that point where we have quite a few finished projects, 365 days mm -hmm. and 452 weeks, however you choose to see it, is quite a long time. So we're trying to kind of embed as much of what we're trying to do within our communities across our district. Um, and with that in mind, we've also, I don't know how many of you might have seen the call out that we did for a competition, at the, I think it was in February, March this year, which is a Royal Institute of British Architects competition about a peripatetic venue, where actually it goes throughout the district. Um, we've also had the Culture Capital Grant. We're literally going through and finalising decisions for that, and we tried to ensure that there was a district <coughs> spread for capital for cultural <coughs> venues, and we've had we had three million on the table. We had fifteen million pounds worth of ask to us so that demonstrated need it also means it got out there and people saw it and people responded there's 80 applications in total and so we've tried to make sure that our kind of the, the shortlist and the people who have been successful in that is district-wide um, so we've tried to kind of meet, make sure that our program our planning how we are approaching it is kind of trying to bring people along that journey with us the last 10 months have been absolutely about raising the funding, developing a team. When I first came to you, I think it was just me and Dan. I think we'd barely started. And now it's brilliant to be here with Rhiannon this, this time, with Kate last time. Next time we'll be here with another member of the team. So it's not only me or Dan, but you're getting to see who else is actually delivering the year. We're also doing something called um, artist drop-ins once a month. We're inviting artists from across the sector, across the sector, across the district, to come and meet with us. Come and have a chat. Come and have a coffee and a cake. It's all about kind of being much more kind of open, much more transparent, and having much more of a conversation, um, because that's what's going to help us deliver a, a year which should be extraordinary. So I'm going to leave it at that, so I can open up for any comments, conversation, uh, questions that anybody might have. You use the word artist, generic 
what sort of thing have you got in mind as artists? You said you'd, you'd, you'd look to have an artist in each yeah, ward. That's a really good question. We've talked a lot, actually, me and Shanaz, about the word artist. I think when you say artist, some well, people might, well, some people might think you mean a visual artist. Yeah. Um, and it's really important that for this, we mean it in the broadest possible terms. We've, we've talked variously about losing word eyes, but we think it's so such an important word. We think we'll stick with it, but we might also add some examples of what that could include, and we might also use the word creative practitioner, because I think by that, what we find in Bradford is people might be take part in cultural activity every day, but they wouldn't call it cultural artist activity, or they might not call it art, but they probably are. There's, there's those latent creative skills that everybody has. So I think actually that what we mean by that is probably the broadest possible definition. We're thinking about hospitality, about food and cooking, about how we take care of ourselves and our friends and family. We're thinking about in, in some parts of Bradford, like, you know, it could be about kind of graffiti art, it could be spoken word art, it could be visual art. We could also be talking about those quite classical interpretations of art, but we want the definition to be really broad when we're talking, talking about this 30 ward programme. Thank you. Um, the legacy, I mean, we're, we're, there's a lot of planning going into what's going to happen in 25, which is all um, very intriguing. But after 25, what is going to be the legacy for Bradford? Is the hope that some of this work will then continue and be embedded into our district um, into the following years? That is the hope. You can't, we, you know, we talk about legacy all the time. It's constantly it's that that and the program itself and the young people keep waking me up between two and four thirty in the morning. Um, it's without the impact of the year, we that the impact of the year will give us our legacy. But the development over this year and next year will also give us our legacy. Work like the the piece that um, Rhiannon is talking about, that social engaged practice piece. The hope here is that actually relationships between artists and communities could become so strong that actually those artists can continue to go to the arts council, get funding, and those relationships continue to develop. The cultural capital grant legacy in hard bricks and mortar is really brilliant to see. And that's why we kind of did that cultural capital grant, because we want our venues to be accessible. So wheelchair users, people with disabilities, we need to make sure that if they're going to be up on a first floor or a second floor, they can get there. That's not just for the year. That makes it accessible beyond the year. The, the work that we're doing with communities and with artists is also the bricks and mortar legacy, but also the people legacy. The cross-district kind of tourism. We talk about tourism and placemaking. I mean, we're really lucky. We've got Bradford, Leeds, Wakefield, Manchester, Sheffield, within commuting distance. So there's a really strong audience base there. What I want for our district, and what our hope and dream is, that we have quite a lot more inter-district tourism, where we actually recognise ourselves more as well. Because we are the best advocates for our district. So beyond 2025, it's not just the rest of the country waking up to the jewel that is Bradford. We also kind of become our, our best advocates and ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So legacy is bricks and mortar, people, and our story. Yeah, I think, I think that's very, very important because it's got, to, it's got to have an impact, not just in 25. Absolutely. And, and I suppose the artistic and cultural infrastructure needs to be beefed up the best it can, yeah. and then, as you say, it continues into the future. Yeah. We also know that the council yeah. launched a 10-year cultural strategy, which is yeah. Culture is Our Plan. So 2025 is midway through it. We've still got another five years as part of Culture is Our Plan. So we, as Bradford City of Culture, are absolutely determined to try and make a proper impact and actually be looking at legacy from the get-go. We started our legacy plan in the minute we won City of Culture. The minute we won that, we started starting to think about what is our impact and what is going to be here post-2025. Uh, and I was just going to say that the majority of our team are of Bradford. We're of Bradford. No city of culture has actually had that. And the more that we are delivering this, the more that we are developing the programme, the more that we are developing our plans for the year, the more important that is actually becoming. The creative skills sector that she has mentioned as well in the programme that we're talking about, the, an artist in every ward, we're trying to ensure that throughout that year those artists are also getting opportunity to increase their skill set. So it's not just about the communities and the people who are in the community, it's about the artists as well. So we're working with Bradford Producing Hub 
um, to increase the capacity of the localised skill sector. And every conversation that Shanaz and myself and the rest of the team are having with international and national artists, it's constantly about what additional value we can leverage for the communities of Bradford. So how can those international artists come and, make, come and work with our local artists to share skills um, and to develop training as well? Um, yes, and also making sure that we have some fundraising capacity for, um, so that we're sharing uh, some grassroots fundraising skills with local community producers through that programme so that when we get to the end of 2025, actually those communities and artists have the capacity to be able to do some grassroots fundraising to continue some of those areas of the programme as well. Okay. Do you have a, um, an envisaged figure, a monetary figure, that this City of Culture for the year will bring to the area? That's constantly shifting at the moment as the funding conversations are being had with funding partners. So we put in a figure of 35 million when we put the bid in. Um, so that's where it is at the moment, but we, are, we want to grow that. We definitely want to grow that. That's the funding that we'll bring in. Do you mean like sort of gross value added? No, no, no. You mean that in total specific? Mean the, yeah. the pure money that yeah. City of Culture yeah. will bring in from the tourism, etc. Oh, from the tourism. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I can give you some you, of those. Not what you envisage to raise. No. To do okay, so from tourism. What you envisage that, that it will generate. Yeah. That piece people. of work is yeah. ongoing at the moment. Pardon? That piece of work is ongoing at the moment. Because right. we're looking at not just... Not just what we've done already and what we are kind of targeting for our budget, what we've already raised for that budget, but also um, the economic investment of the Brit School, for instance, that wouldn't have come to Bradford if we hadn't won City of Culture, if we hadn't kind of very much said our young people, putting our young people <coughs> and at the heart of what we're trying to do for City of Culture, would not have convinced, without that, we wouldn't have convinced Brit School to come. So already that economic investment is massive. It's huge. So, so if, if you're trying to get £35 million pounds to do it all, what is, the t what is the times figure that you envisage coming back? We're literally doing that piece of work with DCMS currently. That's an ongoing piece of work. So, so we, at this point in time, nobody has an idea? No, they don't. My colleague Dan does, because he's leading that piece of work. I'm not leading that piece of work. He's, as exec director, he's leading that piece of work. He has those figures. Right. So you, you don't know them? Not off the top of my head, no. No, no, no. Just a rough, a rough, you know, what we envisage 35 million spend, but we're going to get five times back. Well, right now, we are looking at, from a visitor perspective, what I can give you is that we want 15 million visitors to come into the district. I can't give you a sum, because I don't want to say a figure if I haven't got the exact details. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the exact details, I say a figure yeah, and it's not yeah, that. Okay, then, that yeah. So that's the only reason why I don't want to say a figure, because I can't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't just pluck one out of the net. You should actually have the exact figure that we're working to. But from a visitor numbers, we're looking at 15 million to come into the district. Yeah, go on. These are early days uh, for Bradford as a city of culture. Uh, from what you said, things are going all well. Do you feel you're accomplishing something already? It feels like that. Well, as I just said, we wouldn't have got Brit School if we hadn't already, as well as DCMS, convincing the other departments in government that Bradford is a viable investment for other sectors of the government to come in, because that was the education department that signed off on Brit School coming in. There's also the partnerships with broadcasters, BBC, Channel 4, Sky Arts, um, a development programme for young filmmakers, not just young filmmakers, but those filmmakers who are out mid-career and who haven't kind of had that next leg, next opportunity. So we're talking people in their late 30s and 40s who might not have actually had the opportunity, Channel 4 is coming talking to us and saying, actually, what can we do there? So broadcast, government, funders are all looking to Bradford and saying, actually, we're excited by your plans and how you are driving this forward. We want to work with you. So we think so far, so far, fingers crossed, we're going in the right direction. But who knows what the world holds, because we couldn't have predicted COVID. So we're kind of focused and kind of trying to make sure that we actually keep going the trajectory that we're going. So we think so far it feels feels successful. Thank you. Has anybody got any more questions Shanaz or Shanaz I've got one which is you said you want to keep coming back when you want to come back. When so you think it's an appropriate we're time. into we're into I think the next time would be call outs actually when we're doing the call out yeah. so we can actually once we've landed this next Pot of funding, so I think November, December, we're in August now, 
end of August, beginning of September. So that's in about two, two and a half months, I'd say. Okay. Well, When's your next town council meeting? Well, we have them every, every month, but they get a bit funny around <laughs> the, the turn of the year because of Christmas, etc. Yeah. So right? if we say November... And, and it's budget set in so November. Yeah. No, we miss one in November. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then we have an early one in December. So I'd say the early one in December then, because that yeah. gives us enough time to hopefully to have landed the next round of funding so that we can actually be talking about the call out so we should have the artist call out by then we should we should have the the large scale social guys practice piece of work call out by then we should have more team so there should be another different person for you all to meet at that point as well um and actually we should have the pattern of the artist dropping as well so by that point you know there'll be much much more to talk about as well December. We'll get more popular invite. Thank, thank you very much for, for coming. I know you should, I think it's okay to, to But it's always, always a pleasure because if we don't kind of come and speak and talk, we kind of don't know what the thinking is and what the queries are and what the questions are. So we'll keep doing that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. ongoing items. So our first one was the BTB radio request. Now we, we seem to really be struggling to find dates and times for this. I mean, do we actually want to do it? Are we struggling because of councillors or because of BCB? Uh, councillors. What do we want to do? They want to make a radio programme where they come in, they interview a few of us, they have a couple of um, local acts sitting in the corner of the hall, and we just talk about what it's like being a council and being councillors. Um, we, we did have a meeting set up, we didn't get confirmations that people were coming, I had asked people to put all their availability for September in a spreadsheet, it's not happened. I'm, getting the feeling we don't have a lot of traction to do it and if we're going to not do it let's not keep Do we have any idea, I'm oh, sorry Chair, do we have any idea what the take up from other local councils is? You know, is Chippy all over it, Bowden all over it? Chippy has done one, yes. Mm, okay. Joe Ashton was what, 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 what would we want to get out of it? Well, like, we're doing, what do we want to do? But for councils generally, for being a town councillor, for what, what we as being, being we are so doing. So we've got some jewels in the crown that we can explore and show them. Well, it's whatever people who want to take part no, no, want but, to but, bring to the table. No, I, I think it's more than that. I think it's a council, what the council wants to, wants to show, not what individuals want to show. Mm. Well, they want to they want to interview individuals. No, no, I get that. But there has got to be it's got it's got narrative, aren't there? Yeah, but it's got to be the things that really yeah. interest individuals. Isn't right? Joe Ashton the clerk of Shipley? Yes. Yeah. He is the clerk. He is the clerk. What? There's the clock. Get it on the way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, think I, I don't want to be involved. When <laughs> they did the councillors that volunteered were the councillors that wanted to yeah, be involved, yeah. weren't they? Yeah, they were, yeah, yeah. Council. No, I said I'd do it, but sorry, I haven't seen this bit sheet. That, that's passed me by. Yeah, it's, on, it's on Teams. Oh, right. Oh. I, provided, I provided my input I via, X, via email, but haven't put it on the Teams thing, so... But no one else has. Well, mm. I, I, I mean, my view is I'd do it with an arm pressed up behind my back. Yeah. My, my, my London accent doesn't come across well on a tape recorder. I know that I'm old. Uh, it's been dogging me for forty years, so uh, you know I'm not, not maybe the best person, but hey, I'll go for it. Well, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We need Lewis Curdell back, that's what we need. Well, yeah, but he wants to do like an hour programme, so it's, it's good got one. to have sufficient people who with arms on their backs, if that's the one we're doing. What kind of H is I'm, I'm willing to be involved, but, and, and I would have gone to the earlier meeting, yeah. but I know it's been difficult finding a mutually convenient yeah. spot. But do we just want to say, not at this time? Thank you very much. Is that your uh, your gut feel? Given the, the amount of the struggles we're having to take it forward, I think so. Okay. Unless unless there is an upswell of take up to do it. Is that your proposal? That's my proposal. I'll second it. <laughs> All in favour of not doing the radio program. Oh, can you put your hands up? Oh. So that, that means we don't do it. Yeah. We, will, we will politely decline. Uh, Bingley Pool. Is there any update? No update at the moment from Friends of Bingley Pool. We've still got no idea when the mic holds any. No, because we're still struggling for trustees. Similar problem. Can't get people to come on board and do the work. So we're just trying to plod along at the moment and get some trustees on board. Okay. That's a little bit disappointing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. There's, there's various issues with that, and it's just. Um, it's just getting, we're just getting through that transitional phase. We will move on then. Can, can, we, can we launch that into City of Culture? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> looking for a, a grant or something like that. Well, all that's in place. It's trustees we need to do the work. Right. To do filling in the forms of the grants and publicising and one thing or another. There just isn't enough of us. There's only three of us who are active at the moment. Right. And we just can't do everything, so we're basically just treading water. So just, <laughs> <laughs> just not in Bingley Pool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll move on then to climate emergency. Um, I think everyone's had Steve's paper last month. Um, yeah. Uh, if I if I may chair, I, I I've kicked this around for a year or more now, and to my mind, when that was put before the council, um, it, it came with no evidence other than the fact here's a nice uh, policy that's been put before district councils, and district councils can impact their carbon footprint by um, they operate bus services and things like that, so they they operate fleets of. Uh, um, refused vans and things like that. So they can actually do anything, but a parish council we couldn't, and I argued about it at the time. And, and since that time, we've <coughs> struggled to uh, have a climate emergency meeting. Uh, we struggled to talk about anything in, in there. And if you look at the, um, uh, the, the bullet points which were in the original motion, we can't do any of them. Um, so I, I, I get that it's an emotive topic, um, and it's the word that climate emergency gets me. So um, I think the only data that's out there is the Icelandic um, ice core, which has real data going back over uh, tens of thousands of years. And that reveals that the Earth's climate has varied for as long as the planet has existed with uh, uh, natural cold and warm phases. Uh, in fact, the Little Ice Age ended as recently as 1850. Um, therefore, it's no surprise that we're now experiencing a, a bit of warming because we're coming out of an ice age. Um, but people don't understand that or even know about it. Um, but the warming is now far slower than the predicted. Uh, the world has warmed significantly less than predicted by the IPCC, which is the International um, Party for Climate Change under the World Health Organization. Um, so climate models also have many shortcomings and they're not remotely plausible as global policy tools, uh, basically garbage into them, garbage out. 
Uh, they blow up the effect of greenhouse gases such as CO2. I asked in my paper if anyone knew what the percentage of carbon dioxide was in the atmosphere, and this came up briefly in the last meeting. Um, so I won't test you, but it's, it's basically uh, 407 parts per million. Um, the, the, uh, the charts describe it as a trace element. And, uh, you know, if you're going to go and uh, eat something with a trace element of salt or whatever, you know, you don't even worry about it. But I guess if you could say if it's a trace element of strychnine, you might. Um, but it, it's, not, uh, it, it's not huge. Um, they also ignore the fact that enriching the atmosphere with CO2 is actually beneficial. It's not a pollutant. Uh, it's essential for all life on Earth. Photosynthesis, the plants use it. They pump CO2 into greenhouses in, uh, in Holland. Um, but everyone is, or one is simply not allowed now to research into non-CO2 global warming, i.e. look for other reasons for it, like water vapour from seas and things like that. Um, I mentioned the uh, um, Milankovitch cycles in my paper, and I don't know whether anyone looked that up, but it, the Earth is tilting and spinning all the time on the planet, and that's what gives rise to the phases. But because you're not allowed to research into non-CO2 global warming, they can say 97% of all scientists agree. But that's only because the other side can't get funding. All scientists need to be paid, and if you can't get funding, you don't, you don't live, so that, that's why. Um, but everyone needs to get paid, including climate scientists. But uh, as, a, as an aside, does anyone remember Jonathan Van Tam from uh, COVID? Well, oh, yeah. Guess where yeah. he is now? Pfizer. So, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, he's chief scientist at Pfizer, so he couldn't say anything against mRNA because he was going to bite the hand that was feeding him. So you've got to look at the follow the money. Um, but as we know from experience in other complex areas, misleading uh, how misleading computer models can be. Think about the many wrong predictions by economic models. Think of the large mistakes in recent pandemic modelling. The output of computer, computer models depends fully on the assumptions that model makers put into them. And in the past 50 years, the, production, the predictions of climate models about global warming, their dire effects, have all been wrong. In the engineering community, these models would be qualified as useless. But modern satellites now deliver high quality measurements around the Earth since 1979, and satellite data shows no extreme warming of the planet. And this is cross-checked by millions of weather boom measurements around the planet. But Talking, uh, you know, bring it back down to Earth, uh, if, if, if we consider the pun. Um, if we look at the mean temperature difference between Oslo, Norway, near the North Pole, and Singapore, near the equator, measurements show the difference there as much as 22 degrees centigrade, 20 times bigger than the global warming between 1850 and 2020, and almost 14 times bigger than the so-called scary global warming of 1.6 degrees centigrade between 1850 and 2050. But despite this huge mean temperature difference at 22 degrees centigrade, most cities are very prosperous and the citizens in both cities are enjoying life. So why do the media tell us that a global warming of 1.6 degrees centigrade or more will lead to a disaster, whilst 22 degrees difference between Oslo and Singapore turns out to be no problem whatsoever? Uh, I said just now, follow the money. Uh, our government is committing uh, the UK to spend £1.38 trillion pounds to release our car reduce our carbon footprint from 2020 to 2050. That's just under 50k per UK household. But for what? It won't move the dial one iota. Um, but as a flippant comment, if they can say that hot weather in Corfu is global warming, can I say that cold, wing, wind, cold weather here in Bingley is global cooling? Um, you know, it, it's just half a dozen, one or six to the other. Anyway, whatever the reasons for climate change, it's not a subject that a parish council can, can affect, hence my motion to strike it from the agenda. And the, the, uh, uh, the motion is written on the agenda to agree that a climate emergency, whether it exists or not, so I'm not arguing that it doesn't exist, that's down to each individual. I just don't think it's a matter for a parish council. No, Does anybody it. want to say anything? Yeah, yeah. I'd just like to say thank you, Steve, but this is not. You've just been trying to inf uh, tell people that the 
um, climate emergency doesn't exist, etc., etc. This is all this motion is is it to stay as a, a standing item? That's end of. So thank you for your last 15 minutes. I found it really frustrating listening to it. But <laughs> could, could we move on and, and vote on this? Yeah. It's quite true that nothing since Edwina and that sort of era left, that nothing has been done. So <coughs> there is basically no point in having it as, as a regular item if we aren't going to discuss it. So if he's seconded it, I think you should have a vote. And, 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 and just very quickly, I think it's, I think it, John's point is correct, and, and, and Steve's point is correct, and that, that clearly we haven't got the wherewithal to do anything about it. And, and, and I would support that it's not a standing item. But I think it's important to stress that the council is still committed to environmental, Absolutely. Sound environmental Absolutely. issues, and the work which John um, leads on the clean and green is a positive and practical um, contribution to improving the environment. And that is, that is something that Steve says, Steve, Steve just said, that Bingley Town Council doesn't have any influence on, but anything that's improving. Uh, Envi environmental issues. Uh, I'm not a, yeah. I'm not a left wing environmentalist. I'm yeah. a practical environmentalist. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you do stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, I, I would say, from my perspective, I, I don't necessarily agree with Steve around the climate emergency, but we, as a council, we are not actively doing anything on it. So I don't think it should be a standing agenda item. Mm -hmm. And if we do do something, we should bring it back. We should stand exactly. Up. Yeah, exactly. So, Steve, do you want to propose your motion? Yeah, I've done it, seconded, yeah. and it's a vote. I propose that this council agrees that a climate emergency, whether it exists or not, is not a matter for a parish council, and as such, the subject will be removed as a standing up item agenda item. Agenda item. So, so proposed. Uh, um, Michael's in. So, daily speed indicator devices, uh, <laughs> from my last partnership meeting, Bradford still have not come out with their policy on current policy and what what it should be. Um, I know we've had some correspondence from residents in Gilstead Lane about speed on the road and have we determined where we, what of our suggested locations for these I devices? I will locate that in the next day or two and uh, we actually did send some pictures of them but I'll go check. Yeah. I just don't know if they're exactly where oh, so, yeah. the speed from. so where are we? Because I got the impression that Bradford had changed the policy that they weren't allow it, allowing us to do it. So how can we do anything? You might as well put that not that off as a standing standing item yeah. until they, something comes up. But they haven't changed the policy, they're reviewing the policy, but they seem to have been reviewing the policy for a prolonged period of time. Okay. So, oh, so, so yeah, we're, we're leave, leave it on the agenda. <laughs> Through you, Chair, could I perhaps, perhaps um, um, alert our district councillors to the conundrum which we're struggling with regarding getting these SIDs, which we prepared to pay for, mm -hmm. and and we we've, we've had it in our budget for the last two years. At least ten and, 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 and bureaucratic issues seem to be getting in the way of us getting them installed. So if either of you could raise the matter. With the um, authorities concerned, it might help. So I, I'm happy to do that, but I would like full details. So yeah, we, yeah. We, can, yeah. We, we, we can pick it up. Thanks. I mean, it comes up at every board part of the meeting where where I've got with these, so that we can move forward. And unfortunately, we will we will use our board councillors to try and. It will be Mr. Diwali, I'm sure we need to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. We might get him in touch with Okay, we'll move, we'll move on unless there's anything else on since 23, 24, 89. Finance to receive and approve the schedule payments for August. Anybody have 
very much thanks for doing it. All in favour of accepting Treasury Programs? Yeah. Are you with us, Councillor Wilson? Yes, I am. And to agree the rent reconciliations for July, any queries on those? Yeah. What was that? Proposed by Councillor Booth. Seconded by Councillor Wingard. All in favour? Okay. 23, 24, 90 policies to consider the need for a detailed review of the council's financial regulations and standing orders. Um, I think since we approved both of these in May, there's been a number of discussions that's gone on. Um, there's, there's a number of areas where um, we know we've still got to bring the business case process back to full county, but that will have some minor uh, implications for the financial regulations. Um, there's been some discussion around what standing orders actually say and how we do actually run some of the meetings. Um, so according to standing orders, we should have motions that are written on, on, on the agenda as written and we do have lots of agenda items where we say we'll agree a way forward and we will take we do as a matter of practice um, take a proposal and vote on it, which seems to go against the standing orders as, as written. So I think we probably do need to have a, a, a thorough review of them and just make sure that they are working and fit for purpose for how we want to work and how we do work. Um, my suggestion would be that we push them back through F and GP to have a have a look at and revise. Yeah, and, and, and uh, a small working group yeah. could yeah. go through them. Yeah. Any objections to that? No. no. Yeah. I mean, clearly, Chair, I mean, we'd only change them if we feel we need yeah, to change them. Because obviously, a lot of them are perfectly fit for purpose, and we've we've reviewed various bits from time to time, but there are a few issues which have emerged recently which we've, we've somewhat been constrained by. Yes, we, I think we do, we, do, we do need to ensure that they do reflect how we want to work as well as so how we should work as well. Um, okay, so we'll push that to FNG please. 23, 24, 91, appointment of to external bodies, uh, pub watch and bits current form, so to delete the need for council to put what council Williams, you say anything? I mean, you circulated the paper. Uh, circulated the paper, I mean, basically, that's a small group of uh, publicans who <coughs> put together ad hoc meetings as and when necessary, like after the Bingley Weekender, they had a quick urgent meeting because they had a few fights. Uh, what they're not going to do is share with us details they're not going to share with us an agenda. They're not going to share with us any names. Um, what if we do have names because we are there? Uh, we, we can't discuss it in this forum because GDPR and things like that come along. Um, so uh, we could raise with them um, issues outside of you know, a pub for littering or broken glass or whatever, but they say, well, then that's not a... Uh, an issue of pub watch, which is purely about the misbehaviour of people within the pubs. So if you want to raise it with the pub itself, crack on, but it's now to do with pub watch. So I think it was one of those um, misunderstandings of what the pub watch thing was all about, whilst we put our hands up and said uh, we need two people to go. But uh, I think it's we're sticking our nose in where it doesn't really <coughs> warrant being. So I've recommended that we strike the need for two councillors to attend pub watch. No pub watch. I mean, it has to be said again at the World Partnership, the police say pub watch is working very well. Mm, but they don't know. Andy Alderson doesn't go. Just as a, an aside, Andy Alderson doesn't go, nor do the police. They go when there's an issue, when they've been called, if there's GBH or ABH or whatever going on. So we will, de we will delete them from our list of committees and bodies that we attend. 23, 24, 92, the link between Bradford Council and the Town Council. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, obviously I'm relatively new to this. Um, 
And I've sort of like seen some of the social media lately, and that, and obviously the new road layout down by the school there's causing a lot of issues with people. Um, some of the practicalities of it don't seem to have been worked out before, doesn't it? And there just seems to be, to me, uh, as a newcomer, that there doesn't seem to be any link between Bradford Council, uh, the Bradford, sorry, the, the Bingley councillors that are on Bradford, the three of them, excuse me, there's two of you there, um, and, the, and the Bingley Town Council, there doesn't seem to be any coercion, so we don't seem to know what's going on over there. That could be embarrassing to us, and we could do something over here that could be embarrassing to yourselves. But the main thing is that the people have been there. Look out and say, look at what the council's done, and the point of finger at all of us. And we've had no input into many things by the sound of it. So I'm just sort of looking at, is there, a, is there a, some sort of coercion that could happen between the three Bradford councillors representing Bingley and the Bingley Town Council? Because it seems to be two separate entities of different directions. I don't know if you want a response to that. <laughs> um, well, so, sorry, but you two are actually here. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to be here. No, it's all right. But, but seeing you are, you... I'm oh, very happy to... Yeah. It's a good question. I'm happy to answer it. Um, so, the simple truth is the Town Council, when it was founded in 2016, was founded uh, on the basis that it felt we weren't getting enough out of Bradford and uh, people stood up to try and see what they could do for the community, which is why all of you are here today. But, and it's done... The, I think, in my view, and uh, I'm with Mark, as I originally opposed the town council formation, and uh, but I stood because I felt that it needed representatives who shared the scepticism. But I have to say, I've been pleasantly surprised at some of the things we've been able to do to improve our community. I think John has been a stalwart ever since 2016, uh, going out there and doing all the good environmental work. Um, as for our part, yeah, we recognise there's a disconnect between district councillors and town councils. So as of, uh, well, the space when we can finally breathe, having got a better understanding of our role. So like you, we're all fairly new to the post. Uh, longer serving uh, Labour district council has only been in there two years and a bit. Um, so we've, get, we've got a better handle of things. And so now we've taken the view that we want to have a better relationship with the town council. And we recognise that disconnect existed. And whether that's through space, time, or whatever the reasons are for it, uh, we've agreed that at least one of us will be here at every town council meeting going forward. So you'll always be able to put, these, put any questions you have to us, and we'll be able to report back if you'd like us to on the activities we're engaged in. And so you're involved in that consultation as well, and we can get your feedback. Uh, obviously, some things will be sensitive, so we won't be able to share with you directly uh, at that moment, but we will share the thinking behind it, if, of course, it go, when it goes public. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, so we're trying to build that bridge. Okay. Yeah, it's, it is fair to say though that with this um, road layout down past the school, it did come to town council. Being the town council were aware of it, because I remember we discussed it at least one meeting, if not two. So, but I'm not sure that the road layout as it now exists is what we want. It isn't what we wanted, no. It's what came to us because these things do, do it's, more, it, it has changed, but we didn't discuss it. But. I don't see a problem. It's supposed to be a traffic calming exercise, and it'll it'll certainly calm the traffic. <laughs> it's cost me, it's cost me over hundred quid. Can we have one minute, guys? I think yeah. Councillor Clough it did is right. It did come to us, but I think what. Uh, Councillor Forrester is saying, you know, can we have greater involvement? And I wonder whether the two district councillors saw more of that scheme in discussion before it was started and had meetings with the ward, uh, the officers, like the, the, the road guys, to really understand the impact on that stretch of road. Because what we saw was a little tiny PDF, which was hard to get your teeth around. And uh, it was all yellow boxes and yeah. codes and yeah. keys and things. And the reality of it seems to be far removed from the the little PDF we saw. And I'm wondering, and I think what Michael is, is getting at is, you know, would have been better because it impacts on Bingley, whether these guys could have come along and put up a, 
uh, a bigger map and talk to us about dimensions and perhaps meet there and talk about it. Because to me, the, the bus stops are <laughs> absolutely blocking the thoroughfare and there's a matter of time before there's an accident. Picking up uh, Councillor Good's point, yeah, it slows the traffic down. Um, I've got friends who live there uh, in Southlands Grove or whatever and uh, they said it's brilliant. Yeah. So, because you know, the traffic used to scream down there coming out of Bingley, oh, it's the floor we're going down the road. So, it's half a dozen one and six of the other again. Some people like it, some people don't. But I think it's true to say that we didn't really appreciate the full extent of the impact yeah. of it yeah. when you look at it and you think, my goodness, I, I've got neighbours who think it's part of the 15 minute city that you guys are bringing in by stealth, and that's going to be a gateway. With, with uh, a barrier there. To, to, to be fair to myself, I was elected in May, yeah. <laughs> Councillor Winard yes. yeah. and may I, be uh, able to <laughs> answer your questions. Nice. So, okay. I, I, I mean, thanks, uh, yes, that's, fair, that's fair comment. Um, I think people need to know the background of the whole scheme was that there was some terrible fatalities and accidents on that stretch of road going past Beckford School. And um, quite what the solution was is a different matter, but it's fair to say lots of residents on, on that stretch of road, some of them from Bingley Ward, some of them from Bingley Rural, um, clearly wanted some action, the school wanted some action, um, but, but, but and, and, and the um, Bradford Council was able to um, get substantial funding from the West Yorkshire Combined Authority um, from their fund which deals with accidents of air um, prone roads to, to do this work. Um, I think it's fair to say that since it's been implemented there are mixed reviews. I mean I, I think it's fair to say that as I think Steve's point is lots of people when they see things on maps don't quite know how they're going to actually work out in practice. I think the bus stop is a problem because um, I know there's a lady who rang me up thinking I was still a councillor, um, um, complaining that it was difficult for her to um, get to the, um, the bus stop because she had some sort of walking oh, device, yes. you know, yeah. a, a trolley type thing to push ahead, and, and it, it was, was, was challenging for her. Um, there's been issues about where people can park along there. There's been issues about people maybe parking in the side roads um, and, and all of those things. So, uh, so I, I think that some of the criticism is, 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 is reasonable. There were other things which didn't happen. There were suggestions which I think we resisted, I think, um, for putting road humps on Wagon Lane, which to me seemed unnecessary. Um, there was, um, I think there were some suggestions for some further road humps in, was, in yeah. the, um, the, the main road, which I think that, uh, you know, Bingley people got enough road humps in, in, in our vicinity. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, I think the, the, the point Michael makes generally is that there is a mismatch between what members of the public who members of the public think are responsible for things, and um, they blame councils. They think we're it's our, our council as much as, as Bradford. And I think, you know, how we get over that sort of thing is probably the, the real challenge. Chair, yeah, can I just say? I mean, how well informed are you as ward councillors to be able to pass information back to us? Because the message, what we're saying here is, you know, there's no information coming back. We don't get anything. So obviously, you know about stuff that can have an impact on what's happening in Bingley. So it'd be useful to get a feedback on that. That's really that's really what this is about. I mean, I appreciate we've diversified into redoing the road down in the opposite the Bingley Grammar School, the opposite Beckford Grammar School. But really, here it's how can we work together to get information? How will it work? And what can you give us? Because, you know, we get nothing. I mean, it's it's not as fair that. to expect us to answer this. No, it's really just throwing it at us. At, 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 us. No, we're asking the question, how yeah. can you so inform us? Uh, so, we have the ward partnership meetings where the, the town council is represented. Um, so, uh, but, and I think Mark, Joe, Marcus and I can discuss this 
uh, well, it's the three but if you come into these meetings, you can impart information, can you? You can, and I think that's one of the key aims. So as Susan did, she was briefing at the start, uh, she said she was going to, and we'll certainly um, do that as and when we come. It's going to be one of those where we work it as we go along. Oh, yeah. we can't I, give you I appreciate that, Joe. I mean, that's inevitable. Oh, yeah. No, so in but I think for me, though, there's, two, there's two things. Sorry, there's two things here. We shouldn't major on these guys because part I, part I think our general frustration and part of our issues are we tend to say something once and then it goes but goes off we'll, we'll send comments back from things that we're consulted on it's a bit like planning however isn't it where we, know, yes, we, it is, yeah. we, we make comments but then breath of planning department have negotiations with developers and we'll will agree something that we've never seen again. So it's 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 more that how do we get information back of council officers as opposed mm -hmm. to specifically the ward mm -hmm. councillors, I think. And how how can we make that flow of information better? Because I think that's where we all struggle and we all get frustrated because we know we do have some people who will come and say, you've had this on your agenda for years because it's just making drip, mm. drip, drip, drip flow process. So I think it's almost a broader thing. So let's not put it all on the, these, these guys. <laughs> no, they will have some I, information they can they will, have, they, they will, they will sure. probably have some better information on some things than us, but I suspect they also struggle, but they probably have better access to get into offices. I was just going to point that out, Chair, that it actually says the link between Bradford Council yeah. and the town. No. The district councillors and the council. But they are Bradford Council. No, they're not. <laughs> well, they're not. So you're representatives council. on Bradford Council. Yeah, it's yeah. on Bradford Council. Yeah, yeah. I'm acutely yeah. just I'm acutely aware. aware if we didn't have one, we wouldn't have a council. As I live in Cottingley, that there are cost, uh, district councillors who represent Cottingley. Now, I'm not sure whether that's one of the district councillors of here tonight. No, no, no. no. It's it's so awful. can you get together? This has nothing to do with politics. It's just about attending your town council meeting. Can they get together, please, and make sure that we do see a district councillor come in who from actually Bing, represents from Bingley Rural? Bingley Rural. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't think that's our responsibility. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it also works the other way. You know, if we have issues in our wards, we need to let yeah. the local councillors know as well. Yeah. Yeah. If we, we expect them to help us and back us up. We need to let them know. So, you know, if we don't, yeah. Yeah. we can't mourn if we don't get any, Indeed, let any them, support. Let them know what we're interested in. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, every, obviously, everybody is, is welcome to attend their surgery. I'll say that on your behalf, I'm sure that's true. Of course. Just uh, on Mark's point, I think, uh, the um, one suggestion I can think of is if you do have any questions um, ahead, ideally ahead of uh, your full council meetings, uh, just send us the question so that way we can come back that's hopefully good. with a fully informed answer. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah. Reasonable ask and then we'll... be things happening that we don't know about. Yeah. That you can inform us on. That's really what it on, is. On uh, Michael's point about, uh, sorry, it was um, Steve's point about the PDF. Uh, yeah, Jeff and I got a much more comprehensive here are giant maps and layouts, which I'm sure if we'd asked the question, can we share this further afield, or can we get a proper full size of this? Yes, we could have done that. And you could have seen the full scale plan. Um, so I'm happy. Where we can do that, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, mm. fine. Good. Don't worry. Good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 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 Uh, 23, 24, 93, emergency support, so you can update the recommendations for the emergency support subcommittee. Yeah, minutes have been circulated. Um, we moved the uh, review of equipment forward, uh, so hopefully um, we'll be fully stocked with what we need before the dark nights, rather than leaving it till end of year. Um, we are in the process of arranging some uh, 
training for the committee uh, through Mick Burrow uh, about the council which has been very helpful and very useful going through this process uh, and I presume once we've got the dates they will be circulated. Good. Any questions for council Hasselfine? Councillor Hasselfine, you have been Okay, 23, 24, 94, Finance and General Purposes Committee, so please note that and recommendation from Okay, the, the minutes have been circulated. Um, I'll just pull out a few bits and pieces. Grants, we had a grant, um, we made grant decisions at the meeting last month um, with £358 to the um, Cottonley Village Society. Village History Society. Yes. Sorry, sorry, I, I meant to... I'm uh, just reading. No, it's, it's not... No, it, 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 yes, uh, sorry. So you're right, you're I'm, not, right yeah, I'm yes. not being pedantic. Yeah. It's just that it is not to the community association. It is, it's, a, it's a separate entity Village altogether. Yeah. It's, it's Cottonley Village History Society. Sorry, Eve, I'm going to let you know. So, in no, advance, and, anyway, that was for a projector so that they can yeah, use it yeah. for um, their, their meetings. And we also um, paid uh, £382 or agreed £382 to the Jerwood Action Group for various works that they're going to do. A lot of stuff's been going on around allotments, largely due to some good work by councils Hesseltine and Fenton, who've been doing all sorts of work. Um, down on the allotment site. Um, we, we heard a report that the allotment forum with the um, allotment holders had gone well and had received some positive feedback, so I think that's um, worthy of note. There's been some consideration given to, or will be consideration given to whether some sort of handyman might be um, commissioned or on a call-off basis to um, to do some of the work which occasionally needs to be done around the allotments. Um, and the, the various bits of the work on the allotments, of course, is starting to cost us some money. So um, what we, we agreed was that the um, some money from the allotments reserve fund should be um, wired into the allotments um, account to ensure that um, monies, um, you know, the, these costs are met from from the reserves, which of course are what the reserves, the allotment reserve is is, is, is for. So it's recommended that four thousand two hundred pounds from the allotment reserve fund um, should be wired into the allotment cost centre. Second, that. Can I make a comment? You may. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the comments yeah. regarding myself yeah. and Councillor Fenton. Well, Equally as active was our chair of council, uh, Philip and her partner spent nearly as much time as us there doing the work as well. So yeah. we can't really miss them so, out. So hoping that goes in the record. So we have a proposal in the second for the allotment reserve fund to be wired into the allotment. Well, it's probably relevant. Oh, go uh, just out of interest, you, you don't know about movies on money from X to Y. Yeah. How, how many, or sh the question is, are all the rents up to date for the rent for the allotment? Yes. Well, okay. I mean, for, for background, we're just oh, putting in lots of money in the rents. No, no, I get, I get that. We've we, 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 we we got the second smell. You were old yeah. money, weren't you? We've got the second allotment. Should look after themselves. Yeah. 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 The paperwork process, the paperwork process for that has, has been prolonged, so I think we did decide to do a lesser sum because we've now got lesser money, but it's still not gone. Yeah. Just so people are aware, and that will, so, so money will go into the interest bearing thing at some point. Okay. Any, any questions on FMG 
We'll move on 23, 24, 95, the Neighbourhood Plan Working Group. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, well, we were at last here. The Neighbourhood Plan Working Group uh, lumbers on with this project. Um, we have reached a point where we're happy with the draft Neighbourhood Plan. Um, the up-to-date version is on Teams. Uh, however, um, Aldred Designs was on holiday back uh, yesterday um, and has uh, this morning updated the several typos that were needed, but they were really minor. I'm happy to read them out to you. Um, there was this can, can list doctor surgery in Bing 1, which is a policy, we just changed it to list it in Bing 1 because we'd already done it, and that occurred uh, twice. Um, and the other big typo was really that we were defending the post office in, Bing in Gilstead, which is already closed, and there's a new one open in uh, Priestthorpe. Um, so we deleted that and added the, the one in Priestthorpe onto a new Bingley uh, chart. Um, so that's really detailed within the um, plan itself. Uh, and there was one typing typo where it said wackling instead of walking. Um, so really they were just saying before we put it to you guys and get it out into the public uh, marketplace, those small details should be updated. Um, so the plan is before you for uh, agreeing. We are not, <coughs> not ready to go to Regulation 14 um, survey as yet because we're still talking about the wherewithal of how we tell the population that Reg 14 is out there. Uh, we have had some fairly high costings back from uh, the Royal Mail. Uh, we know what the distribution is for um, cost per hour annual newsletter, it's about £1,100 and the Royal Mail was circa sort of 8500 um, and we, we don't we don't really have a clear idea as to what's best to do yet. So um, the clerk was off asking other councils what they did, and the other local councils uh, didn't send a, a, a postcard out to every household. So I guess for our next meeting we'll be deciding whether or not we need to do that. But it's currently in our plan to, <coughs> to send uh, a postcard to the occupier. The the uh, uh, the plan is out there for a survey um, with the web links and things like that. Uh, the issue for us in using the um, walking routes, uh, so the annual newsletter, um, is basically there are certain blocks of apartments that they can't get access to. Um, so whilst we're saying we would do it to all, we, we know we're not. Um, so it's how do we cater for those where Royal Mail can. Um, but uh, th there was an email came out today about confusion between yeah. our annual newsletter and the Conservative uh, newsletter, which someone had mixed together. Um, but it does, I mean, I received uh, some junk mail from the Royal Mail this morning, along with a, um, a typed named letter. So I, we, don't, we haven't got a handle on it. So we're, 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 what we're doing uh, with the council is seeking to approve what we can at this point in time so that the working group can focus on what it needs to focus on. Um, so the first motion is to agree the plan. But there's a separate piece of paper which uh, the working group agreed we ought to flag to you. And it's, it's a chart. Uh, it, it's actually the combination of two tables from the plan. So I've not changed the wordings of it at all. What I've done is to highlight uh, in yellow the activities that this council will be doing once we agree the plan. Um, the consultant was uh, pointing out to us that we need not wait till the end of the reference, <coughs> which is the end of um, Regulation 16, which on the current timetable is sometime in 2025, before we start to do these things because these are the sort of things that we should be doing anyway. Um, if I can just highlight a couple of them. Uh, in Micklethwaite, it says, bring your town council to discuss with bus companies options for connecting bus from Micklethwaite to other settlements. There's a similar one in Eldrick, to bus uh, from Eldrick to 
um, the town and linking all the uh, sub areas together. Um, there's another one about uh, working with the other allotment um, companies in uh, Micklethwaite and uh, Wagon, uh, Warren Main um, to make sure that we were aware of vacancies and um, usage of those allotments so that we can defend allotments generally. There's a um, working with the school, Bingley Grammar, to improve the biodiversity of areas of the school site which might create environmental benefits, strengthen the case for retention of underused lands in open use, should, should in future parts of school fields be deemed surplus to requirements, so defending green spaces. Now these things uh, don't have a lot of cost. They do have cost in terms of council time and councillors time and staff time, but they're not things which generically say we shouldn't be doing. You know, we should be looking at the uh, uh, application of the design code and Brad Bradford's design code on our high street. We should be talking to the um, building owners of the potting shed to say, could you remove your eight foot silver birch tree at the roof line, please, is letting the high street down. You know, we should as a council be doing some of these things now. So I just wanted to let uh, the councillors know that embedded within this 105 pages is these two tables which are aspirations for this council to do and I personally think that our uh, priority list should be drawn from these lists as well as doing SIDS and things like that. We should be aware of these things in the, uh, the plan because the plan is for the next 13 years starting now from when we wrote it. So that's, that's that on the Council. Now, Chair, do you want to vote these things individually as we get to them? Yeah, I, I, think, I think we need to. And I'm just so let's have a discussion then about just, yeah, just the neighbourhood plan, before the 104 pages of uh, PDF that uh, all the designs have presented and laid before you. I, I mean, Steve's pulled out this list of aspirations just so they are in front of people and you can see them. But just to be clear, the plan does say identifying something does not necessarily mean that the town council have the ability or the funds to do the projects. The projects will require equipment, so they are. Oh, they, they require business cases, which are reasonable documents. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not necessarily going to do it, so we're not committing the town council to do these things. These are the things that people pull out that the community, we believe the community wants. I want, want to see happen, but how then will this be happen? It's not, we're not committing ourselves no. to delivering it. I think, I think we need to just be clear on that. But, but the contrary to that, if we get to the end of 13 years and have done none of them, you wonder why we got it in the first place. So um, you know, you, you've got to have a mind to say that that's a list of aspirations and therefore we should cut out off. If people come forward with yeah. And if I can say, I mean, I think whether the deliverable is different, but I think these are the right sort of things which ideally the council should be looking yeah, at, absolutely. whether we have the, um, the wherewithal to do all of them, as is, is, is said. But I think that when we're thinking about work programmes and things, for, say, for coming years, we need to go into here and pick yeah. out some of the things which we can actually uh, yeah, deliver. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah I, I had a, as an aside, I had a conversation with uh, Marcus, the missing district councillor tonight, um, and he, his view was uh, that a primary um, function of a town council is to deliver for the community a fairly big project every four or five years or so, um, which is not being delivered by the district council. Right? I wonder whether he was thinking a swimming pool at 4.1 million. I wasn't quite sure. But, um, <laughs> but you know, he's joking apart. He said, essentially, you know, we have the capability to deliver a set of toilets um, uh, with 187,000 pounds. So it, that that was delivered. Uh, the CP toilet, 65,000. So we we shouldn't let big projects, um, you know, slip away because you know councillors uh, feel that we haven't got the capabilities because we have proven we have. Does anybody have any questions for Steve on the neighbourhood plan itself or that, those aspirations? No? Okay. So Does anyone want to second the proposal that we accept it? I will. You will. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. 
So all in favour of accepting the name and plan? This is yeah, so it can go forward yeah, effectively when we're ready for the scheduled 14 consultations. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you, councillors. Uh, to agree the, the use of Survey Monkey for the uh, survey, the uh, Philippa and the officers went through the different types of surveys out there, focusing fairly fairly fundamentally on online surveys. You, you probably all heard of survey monkeys, but they, they are some competitors out there. But the working group considered all, all of them and looked at them, and <coughs> the survey monkey by far is the easiest one for us to use and the clearest one for the uh, uh, population to read and um, use it. For example, it allows you to save you consultation halfway through and go off and read up on a paragraph within the neighbourhood plan if you're not sure about it and then come back to it so uh, it, it doesn't sort of dump itself halfway through. Um, the costs, and I've just looked at the uh, draft agenda which hasn't been circulated but the, the costs of Survey Monkey aren't in there but it's not onerous and I don't know whether Philippa can Drag it out from I the top of my head. Off the top of my head, it's three hundred and eighty-four pounds. Yeah, it's not. It's year. not a but huge. Single, it's, a single, it's a single user license, but it allows us to do as many surveys as we want. And, and that's place, another so we point. Can use it for yeah. Other, yeah. Other, yeah. 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 So it, 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 well. it allows you to do survey, so any other councillor can use it for a survey if they want to find out what the public think about things. Yeah, I've just gone on uh, this group and been part of the discussions regarding Survey Monkey and the costings for the policy map. I'm quite happy to second those proposals. Thank you, David. Uh, so, do you want to take Survey Monkey first, then, Chair? Oh, I'll just say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll take Survey Monkey. So, I proposed it, uh, David seconded it. So. All in favour? Yeah. Thank you. Um, to agree the costing for the policy maps, um, policy maps. So these are the policy map is an online map and it's high definition, so you can drive into it and scroll into it and see what it is. And it, it's a map of all the policies which are included in the plan, which we've just agreed in pictorial form, and it is only used for. Uh, the planning department, so they get a, uh, a planning application for a piece of land, a building or whatever, so they, they dive into the policy map to see what policies in that area are impacting and then they can go and read the, the plan. So it, it, it's really a tool for the, uh, the planning authority to use. However, you know, we refer to it, we pay for it, so uh, the, the public uh, will want to see it, we figure. Uh, but not everyone's got um, the ability to use IT and therefore we want to print it and have one one in the um, hub and one in the library. So we, we've gone through uh, Algae Designs to get some uh, some quotations. He's done some com competitive quotations and the um, working group are putting in before you um, one colour print for the library at uh, 841 millimetre square, which is a naught size. I'm hoping, David, you're the printer. Um, at sixty pound, laminated at sixty pounds, <coughs> um, and one colour print two metres by two metres on, on ten mil foam or, or um, backing uh, for the hub at two hundred and twenty two pounds. So two hundred and eighty two pounds spend uh, for two big pictures of the policy map. Yeah. No, that's proposed. Yeah. Second, yeah. Second. No, 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 David had already seconded it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. Oh, you're <laughs> doing your usual. I, I don't yeah, with me yeah, as well. I don't with me as well. I just make sure it gets second, money. Right. Thank you. So we've done some Thank you, John. We've done yeah. our policies maps. So we'll move on. 20, 23, 24, <coughs> 96, planning committee. Thank you, Jay. Well, the minutes have been circulated. We have, as uh, a bit on the side, there are around three that we discussed last meeting and they've already been uh, and they've approved they've agreed what we've said <coughs> out of the 12 that's outstanding which includes those three uh, there are three of them which uh, in one case we approved it they've refused it uh, in two cases in one case we refused it and they've granted it so it's three out of 12 I think overall we're doing quite a little better than we were but as we already <coughs> said 
We don't have a voice. No. All we do is pass our comments on. And the planning department will do what they will do. Yeah, well they've got the legal backing, haven't they? And we are very fortunate in that we often, most of them actually, uh, we ask, Nick has to ask for extensions. Because the date on the, plan, on the planning application is often either before our meeting or the day of the meeting or, um, you know, so, but we usually, probably 99 out of 100, we do get, you know, we get granted extra time. Any questions for Ken Football? No. Thank you very much. 23, 24, 97, Green and Clean. Consider any updates on Green and Clean. Drama time, eh? Drama time, eh? Yeah, well, um, so unfortunately we had to cancel the last. Uh, Fortunately, we cancelled it on the Friday, uh, Eve and I. Uh, and as you as you know, um, I was well rushed to yeah, rushed to hospital and were there for five days. And I'd like to thank anybody or everybody who uh, send uh, no, I said condolences. Uh, <laughs> send, 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 the, send the concerns, and uh, that's appreciated. Uh, I haven't uh, arranged any. Uh, 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 the next one yet. Um, uh, neighbourhood f um, Green and Clean Forums, uh, I just received a notification of a possible uh, speaker, etc., but it proved far too expensive for the sort of um, amount of people we get, etc., etc. Um, so we're looking into that. Um, I'll have another word with Debbie and we'll see if we can get any, uh, anyone on that. Um, as I reported at the um, FNGP, uh, we got a problem uh, because, as you all know, or um, probably uh, Councillor Shaw, I don't know, uh, I know uh, uh, or Michael, um, we provide plants uh, free of charge to about 12 or 13 uh, local groups. But unfortunately, the contract, and we get them through Bradford Council, which we pay cost, uh, cost price from Bradford Council. Uh, but unfortunately, their, their contractor has gone into liquidation. Now, I have spoken to Mel Smith today, actually, and he has um, he's confirmed that he has plants ordered, but because this particular company probably supplies a lot of other councils, um, it was quite a, quite a, a task uh, to fulfil the orders. So... Any bulbs uh, is going to um, is going to fulfil the, the contract for the bulbs. However, there will be mixed bulbs. There won't be any fixed colours. And similarly with the the, be the bedding plants, we some we offer some various um, fixed colours as a lot as long as uh, mixed colours. So they're going to be all mixed. So I'd like to suggest propose probably me and uh, and the um, office staff. Uh, through probably Debbie, that we, we <coughs> as a council, write to the individual groups at this stage, tell them the situation and tell them... What we're uh, You'll get what you're given. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 you, but you're getting it for now and you'll have a load of colour. So that, that's my proposal. That's my proposal. Um, I, th I think that co covers it for now. Um, I'll see. What, I'll see what can do regarding the next little pick, but uh, we'll we'll, okay. we'll look into the future. Okay. okay. Thank you, John. Thank and you. The, the next the next bit on the green claim is to form the council with responsibility for green claim matters. We were we, we have looked at this in F and G We decided not to bring it here um, in case any of the councillors that were recently co-opted wanted to take this forward. As, as we all know, John does a sterling job, but I think a bit of cover for him, um, especially given recent events, would, 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 would be good. So if there is anybody who would like to take a role assisting John, please step forward now. Just come up with a suggestion for the next little pig. That do me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's success. It's because we're doing so well. I'm, That's the problem. I'm, 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 
Well, I think so anyway. Yeah. Well, I think we do. Yeah. I think you do a grand job, John. Keep going. Well, Keep going. Support yeah. would, would, would help you. Okay. So, Any, anybody who wants to become secondary responsibilities? Well, yeah. 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 Keep it going for now. And then. No, okay. Looks like you like the job. Yeah. Okay, moving on then. 23, 24, 98, five rise, green marking. Um, I still have no date for when the red signs are coming out of the red residential. Um, I, am, I am going to get, get our own quote, start making uh, inquiries with people about the plant in the road. Um, see how much they might cost. Uh, again, primarily so if something just if there's an opportunity to come up for your city of culture to get something for it so, so we're ready to go. Um, I've adapted the uh, design that Canal and Rivers Trust that had originally got done. Um, I haven't circulated it, it looks something like this. So this is I'm going to try and get quotes for people producing something like this that could, could be on the road, just so we have a better idea of what our plan B might be if nothing else <coughs> comes to fruition. Uh, that's it. Any questions on it? Because Canal and River just seem to be uh, bits that I've read recently are struggling, aren't they? And, they uh, are. and, and cutting and. and uh, and in fact, I'll, I'll jump back to Green and Clean because I did say the other week that they'd said they could take, Bradford had said they could take on eight bins. Yeah, that that's seems that's to drop down to three. three. Yeah. You know, we're taking on eight bins along the towpath, but three of them are in Bingley. But it's, the, it's just the ones yeah, I think that are easiest to, to get to and not necessarily in the best place. Um, so three and five rides will be. Problem continuing requires, I think. So it's the two further up after Five Rise on Slanted Road and Canal Road, and the one in the middle of Bingley by, by the bridge that are the three that Brent is, <coughs> think they would take on. And as far as I'm aware, it's still Canal and Rivers Trust intention to take the other down. I suppose, Chair, we have to say three bins being maintained is better it's than none. It's better than none, yeah. yes. <laughs> I think it's a watch, watch this space and we'll see mm -hmm. if it does cause us issues or if it causes the permission. Any questions on any of that? No. 23, 24, 99, the town clerk's report. You've all had town clerk's report. No. Mm -hmm. No, no questions? No? Yeah. Okay, 23, 24, 100. Correspondence to the correspondence. So we did have the email on Amazon call yeah. uh, about the weekend of traffic, park, parking on grass bridges, <coughs> driveways. Again, that's the all directed direct the Bradford Council. <laughs> um, there's not too much else I think we can do on that one. So I think the main problem with doing the weekend was the Friday with the weather. But they did have a contingency plan already in situation for it. And uh, they actually worked it out over the time of the evening that they put in a, all a new road in and I had my vehicle down there with towing vehicles in and out and we sorted it all out. And it ran really well after that. It was just on that Friday, Friday or Thursday that they had the problem with the bad weather. And they hadn't taken into account as much as it was going to be as bad as it was. Yeah, I think I think the weather was all right. This was more just people. Just it was parking because they couldn't get the car into the, car into the campsite on the, on the Thursday. That was the main issue. Because that back uh, entrance, is a, it was just like a bog. Even the ambulance went pull it out with the telehandler. So again, I think we're just we're just noting that. Really, aren't we? is, is that that's obviously an annual event, is it? Yes. So there'll be some learning lessons learned and contingency. Oh yes. Putting for next time, etc. Really. But it's an event that happens. Um, it's, it's, it's run by private companies to go to the club, so it's, we don't have 
a lot to do with it. We can ask you. We can ask, we can ask for things. What, what, what they're going to do, yeah. 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 Um, then, we've, moving on, we've got an email from Highways at Bradford Council about putting some bollards on Parkway from Main Street. Um, effectively, I think it's the delivery drivers, the, the dominoes are mounting, mounting the, the pavement yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 to, to, to prevent no, that. Right, yeah. Again, I think we know that. So I actually met Nicola on site to Stamford and there's a lady marking the road up and it's primarily the <clears throat> area by the traffic lights and the crossing that Domino seem to like parking on. Uh, hopefully, uh, so we're putting four bollards in, um, hopefully we've got to do an additional one but that we'll have to wait and see. But it is a nuisance. Yeah. The most likely now is a parking yellow box. So again, I think we know that. Next one's phone calls. Right. I'm assuming there's a two. Yeah. Um, same thing at this point. No. We've discussed this one. We've discussed that and we've never tried that. Uh, email from Bingley Chamber of Trade, read their next meeting on the 4th of September. I think it's not really their next meeting, it is a formal relaunch of the Chamber of Trade. Um, I think the meeting itself is by invitation. Um, if anybody wants to go, um, I'm sure Mr Illingworth will uh, provide said invitation. Um, and it would, be, it would be nice to see it as a vibrant body because I think it's been, as, as, as people here have said I think it's been struggling recently. Struggling on where you went on it David. <laughs> <laughs> so but then we've got an email from the West Yorkshire Lieutenancy seeking an invitation to come to the meeting. Which, which chair I think we should do. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should yeah. do. So we'll invite them to come and tell us all about themselves. Well you have to make sure I do I know this guy. And don't let him grab along, just give him a say, right, you've got because he'll talk all my I've known him for forty years and he's yeah. But it might depend who actually comes to yeah, it. Yeah, Well it's him himself that said he's interested in doing it, so I think he will But there's a group of them, isn't there? Yeah, there is a group of yeah. people, I think it's fair to say that the six the about sixty the sixty. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty deputies. Said that, uh, I think my David that's written this one from, from so we will invite them, but I think we've already got people lined up for September and October. Yeah. And yeah. 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 So in the new year. So it will probably be in the new year. Oh, and then we had an email from a resident of Festival Lights about the Christmas lighting being there. I think that was them falling out of the tree, yeah. yes, wasn't it? Yeah. Which has been resolved. Yeah. Yeah. Same way. Same way. Okay, so that's that one. 23. So, Chair, there's been an email to it. There's been, been a correspondence today, hasn't there? About, about, no, about, about, this newsletter, about this newsletter. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and it, it needs sorting, doesn't it? Because. Uh, we just there's no place in town council for park politics. So I would like to say, uh, su suggest, or propose that in the future we make it clear that no, no political um, literature. literature is a good word. Literature should be combined with ours, uh, giving the uh, uh, impression. impression thank you. What would you do without you? <laughs> <laughs> Giving the impression that it's it's from us. Yeah. I, I think it, I do. I really do believe it's <coughs> important. It wasn't so much, if I may. It wasn't so much that it was in the same letterbox. No, it, it was, was in the, the it's exactly, exactly, in the exactly. And, 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 yeah. and as you can imagine, and, and that's I, not I know acceptable you to us who commissioned the I, delivery I, for the other leaflets. No. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and I noticed, thanks to Jeff, that you you yes. responded yeah. to that. I've, I've read that. But I just I do think in the council it is important. Yeah, I think we I, I think we need to look at our what our contract with them says. So yeah. we, we ensure that it goes it goes it goes out without other 
Which obviously they could, but even if they're not supposed to have them stuck no, into each other, be stuck yes, together, no. one of the parties will lose out to them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but we don't know if this was just accidental. Yeah. Or yeah. The way no, it's just. I have some. I have some uh, experience in delivering leaflets, and uh, it's a lot easier if you stick them all in one thing and you can and put them through together. Try to try to do five or six at, at once. It's probably happened all over Cotton because mine was being on the crowd today. So. Right. Okay. So now been. So we 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 will need to take that up with the delivery company to ensure. That <coughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, 23, 24, 101, promotional items to consider any promotional items. Promotional items. Yeah. We've got the city culture up there. Should we let people know about the bollards? Yeah. 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 Something around our uh, working with the board councillors. Mm -hmm. Do we advertise what money that's posted to us? To say these are available for X, Y, and Z. Yeah, we've put we've put more on Facebook and Twitter. Anything else promotional? I think you have a trade meeting. Yeah, I'm a bit worried because it's by invitation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can put that it's happening. Well, Michelle's put it out there, there hasn't she, she, and said well, yeah. you can well, join as a member if you have no, a business. Uh, well, well, I have a question. Can, can, I, Chair, can I just go through David? I don't, is it invitation? Well, because we were, we were trying to get as many well, businesses. Originally, it was an invitation. We, Michelle and myself, made an offer. If they gave us a list of the members, that, yeah, we you will knock on other business doors in Bingley and say it's happening. Right. Um, and so they, but the, I would say if it's advertised, you are a Bingley business. That's what I mean. Yeah, mm. yeah. It'd be open to you. Could turn up. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's that's what I'm asking. So publicise it, but for business people. Yeah. 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 So what can we say about progress on the neighbourhood plan? We can say we've agreed it. We can say we've agreed it. We've agreed it. We've agreed it. And the, the, the consultation will be soon. Or so far we are. Well, in the autumn. <laughs> yeah. In the autumn. In the autumn. Yeah. Autumn. Autumn. yeah. Winter's coming. It's been planned. Yeah. yeah it's it's like treacle. Okay, anything else? Your climate emergency. Many residents will be wanting to know that we've stricken it from the agenda. <laughs> I think young residents would be interested. <laughs> I know several neighbours who would be interested. David, David, is there anything about the emergency support committee you'd like to compromise? I don't think so, no. We've, you know, it's there uh, as a group, should there be an emergency. We're doing some training. Uh, we did agree that we're not going to have a standing army of volunteers because it's beyond the wherewithal. And how do you keep volunteers engaged for maybe another 10, 12, 15 years? Um, so it will be a reactive emergency group. So I don't think we need to say help. Okay. Well. Sorry, can I just um, jump back to correspondence? There was the email from the lady, wasn't the one to join the neighbourhood plan working group? Yes, there was. Yes, you're quite right. Uh, do you want to take that chair? Yeah, exactly. And do you want me to say it, or do you want to say it? Yeah, just... oh, there's, there's a, a neighbour of mine called uh, Jan, Jan Smith who wants to join the neighbourhood plan working group as a lay member. Uh, we have uh, my wife Lynn on there as a lay member, John Decker. Tony Irwin, um, Martin, 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 Weaver sometimes, yeah, uh, Andrew Quarry, so that it, it's got space up to 20, 20, 
20 lay members, so Jen no, put her name forward. Yeah. 20 members in total. In total, six of them. There are 14 lay members, so we, we could do with some more. It's a bit late, late stage, but we are talking about Regulation 14. We are talking about people <coughs> standing up and talking about it. So uh, I would propose yeah. we uh, agree that Jen should join the neighbourhood plan. And I'll work group. Thank you very much, John. Uh, any comments? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Eve. Uh, hey, that was good. 23 24 102, date of the next meeting. To agree the date, the council meeting is Tuesday, the 26th of September, and it's going to be at the Little House in Market Street, Bingley. And just oh, advance great. notice to you all the first thing on that agenda will have to be the election of a chair. That's both Mark and myself for a while. You don't have to elect a chair, you just have to nominate a chair. Well, I'll nominate a chair for the yeah. meeting. Me and Will, for the Who turns up? We might all be on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so that, that is just a fans note, is that what will yeah. happen? Yeah. So we will need to step forward to chair that meeting. Um, then we move on to 23, 24, 103, exclusion for the press and the public. So. Well,